Hello internet people and uh, welcome along to my channel today. Uh, today I am uh, really really excited actually. Um, <clears throat> uh, over the last few weeks I've been uh, chatting to a guy named Andre and he uh, is a designer but he's been uh, designing and 3D printing some pinhole cameras and recently he's been wanting to get into um, doing some large format cameras uh, so he's messaged me and asked me a few questions of what I would like out of a large format pinhole camera and um, just some, a bit of advice really so anyway he very very kindly uh, printed me up a camera um, and sent it through to me along with uh, another little uh, 6x6 as well uh, so yeah today I'm out with that um, I'll show you in a minute and I'm uh, going to see how well it performs. It's uh, a prototype at the moment. He's uh, messaged me with a list of things he wants to improve on, or uh, wants my opinion on. Uh, yeah, so we're going to be going through that today. So really, really excited. So, see how we get on. everyone this is it 3d printed 4x5 pinhole camera so this has got a uh, focal length of 35 mil uh, I chose that um, I've got some I've got the 045 in 25 mil which is sometimes just insanely wide but I've got a couple already in 50 so I, I kind of wanted to see what 35 would be like um, it's got an aperture of a uh, 175 I think the pinhole is 0 0.2 um, Nice snappy little shutter. Uh, it's got some nice engraved for your uh, field of view. A uh, couple little bubble levels, tripod sockets. Uh, I love this on the back. Uh, the big magnetic back, which holds the film in. Uh, I know there's a few concerns about how tight this is, which I'll go through. Um, but yeah, get that loaded on the tripod and see what we can get. But also. He sent me this, which is a little 6x6, six six, uh, medium format, 20mm focal length aperture of 137 and I think this is just absolutely beautiful. Again, a nice snappy little shutter, filter holder, just magnetics on, um, nice little film winders, um, nice uh, thingy for your so you know what film you're putting in uh, it's all magnetic together and this is really nice I'm not using this today I'm waiting for some film to come through uh, before I get out with that but um, part of his inspiration behind this was to have something small light wide so you can take it on your bike strap it to your bike skateboarding down the pub open it up that sort of thing just uh, almost like a little action camera so this is right up my street um, I've even tried it on my gimbal and it works it works really well on my gimbal so I think I'm gonna have some fun with that but yeah uh, I'm not shooting this one today but um, keep an eye out and I will be on this one soon okay so the first photo I'm just gonna get a picture of where I just was with my little dog if he stays there uh, hopefully you just get some of the cliffs off over here as well and a bit of whatever really so so the aperture is 175, I've got a meter reading, I've got some Fomipan 100, so I've got a 47 50 second exposure for this. Let's take our first shot. Now one of Andre's uh, first concerns of this was the uh, shutter. Uh, felt it was too snappy, too much, too much, it's all held together with magnets, I'll show you in a little while. Uh, he felt it was too snappy, it might add maybe too much movement, but it does shake the camera a little bit, but I don't think it's really anything to be concerned about on this. It's nice to have uh, quite a strong shutter. It's not too strong, so, And if you are concerned about it, 
uh, you could just cover your finger like that. Which quite a lot of people do on uh, pinhole cameras anyway, because quite a lot of shutter systems will wobble them a little bit. So I'm not concerned about the shutter tool, I like it. Um, it's good, it feels robust, so I'm happy with that. Okay, so this is inside the camera. Now when he posted it out to me, he said about that I've got a glue uh, a bit inside, which is this little section. And that holds the shutter system. So like I said, goes from magnet to magnet. But I was ready to glue this in uh, as it was coming through the post pretty much. But I really like the fact that this comes apart. Uh, it does clip in could probably be a little bit better but then that it is designed to be glued in so the reason why I like it is if you get uh, if you're down the beach get hit by a wave get some sand blown into the shutter system um, you can just pull this apart you can clean it all out and you don't have to worry whereas a lot of the other cameras it's all sealed in if you get uh, grit into the shutter system it's a nightmare to clean out where I love the fact you can pull this apart. Not only that, you know, you could change, you know, have some more colour shutter systems available and stuff and uh, change your pinhole and, you know, whatever fancies your mood. So I love the fact that this comes apart. Uh, it's, a, I think, a real bonus and I personally think it should stay like that, Andre. No glue. But, yeah, like that. Anyway. Second shot, let's take it. Okay, so another uh, area of concern um, he had was this back plate that was too strong the magnets are proper proper strong on it uh, so it does really hold it in place um, but the fitting for this with the uh, felt going around it that's strong enough to hold um, that in place as it is um, but it's may it is maybe a bit a tad too strong uh, it has pulled the magnets out a couple of times um, but I kind of it feels more robust when it's stronger I mean I say my zero image is held together with uh, elastic bands which I've knocked a few times when you're in situations and it's kind of opened up and ruined the shot the Ondu has magnetic little strips uh, in strong winds they have come off the films caught the uh, the winds caught the film hold and blown it all off uh, but they do also supply a screwy inversion as well um, but this it is strong but um, I kind of feel a bit more confident with it. It just snaps on. You know, that ain't going nowhere. So I kind of like it. I get what um, the concern, um, but I don't think it really needs to be adjusted too much. So yeah, it kind of yeah, it does give me a bit of confidence. I do quite like it. Anyway, another shot. I just spotted a tree up a hill but this one's too old and can't be bothered to walk up the hill so I've got to carry him man, man. so I've come up the hill for another tree um, another thing I quite like about this back is if you watched my last video I accidentally pulled the wrong dark slide out completely exposed and damaged the film uh, they do have these tabs to prevent that but even today I've forgotten to use them but this with the way it's fitted I'm pretty confident that I could do that and not damage the film and I'm I'm gonna try it so I'm gonna get two shots of this tree one of them 
I'm going to remove uh, the dark slide in the back for a few seconds, replace it, we'll develop it and see if this is pretty light tight. I'm kind of confident it is. So and if it is, that is a huge bonus for stupid little mistakes like that. Okay, so what we'll do is take this back out. That's the photo I've just taken. We'll put this back over. Make sure it's all clipped down. And let's accidentally on purpose remove that slide. Find out later. But just in case I'm wrong, I'm going to um, retake that shot, and um, at least I've got a backup then. Right, while I'm sitting up here, I just want to say a massive thank you to Garen Ge uh, Keesley. I think it's correct in pronunciation. Uh, he recently sent me this uh, photo book, uh, which he had taken throughout lockdown. It's a series of photos taken with his uh, Olympus FT uh, half frame camera I believe um, and seriously I just want to say a huge huge thank you to Garen it's um, I really really appreciate it um, part of the issue with I suppose internet it makes the world seem a lot a lot of a, a smaller place and uh, when he messaged me and said I've got this I want to send it to you I kind of thought oh, I'll be in a, a couple of days or something uh, but it turns out he lives in California um, I, thought, I thought it was just someone down the road so um, which made it even a bit more special actually the fact he has posted this all the way from California and I've really enjoyed it um, really enjoyed it uh, we've got a series of color pictures some nice black and white ones and yeah I'll, uh, I'll leave his links below uh, hopefully he's got a link to that somewhere you can uh, DM in for it but yeah huge thank you Garen I'm currently sitting on the South Downs on uh, the south coast of England having a little flick for it so thank you very much anyway I've got my last shot set up I'm gonna try and a portrait uh, with the wall, wall wall running next to it in the tree and the road just leaning off so this will be the last one Okay, so I'm back now and I've developed all the film. Uh, firstly, I just want to say really, really enjoyed using this camera. It uh, feels, like I mentioned in the video, robust and uh, kind of hardware. And it's something I'd um, certainly be comfortable to take out on my paddleboard, my kayak, my skateboard, out for bike ride and stuff. Um, with the wooden ones, you certainly do worry about them getting knocked about a bit and scuffed and scratched. Whereas this, I certainly feel it's... Um, yeah, more for that sort of environment. Um, now, obviously, this was a prototype, and we were expecting a, a couple of problems, and it doesn't didn't uh, didn't disappoint. <laughs> um, so let's just quickly take a look at the first uh, photos which I've just filmed. I did go back out afterwards when I'd adjusted the problems, and um, but we'll go for that in a bit. So the first one is obviously shows the problem. <laughs> We've got a big circle and these very obvious light leaks along the bottom. Now what's happened here is uh, the circle is the um, outer hole of the pinhole camera obstruct, uh, obstructing the light. Uh, the reason why we think this has happened is when Andre had uh, designed the camera, it was originally for a uh, focal length of 50mm, I then threw it on him to do a 35 and that kind of just got missed. Um, and the light leaks we think were just something coming from around the, the shutter system. Anyway, I um, fixed this the way I know how, which is with some tape and some files. Uh, and Andre um, has completely redesigned the camera uh, to get rid of all these problems. Anyway, so I um, sorted these problems out myself with this camera and then did go back out to reshoot. But we'll quickly look at these pictures to see what we got just to get a bit of an idea. So this was the first one with uh, my dog. 
Uh, second one was uh, that tree. Uh, then the gate. Now this uh, was the tree on the top of the hill. This is where I removed the dark slide with it with the back on. And if we just flip between them two photos, you will see not a lot has changed. There's a slight different in their exposure, but that could just be down from purely the light of the time and the shutter system. Uh, but yeah, so that back is pretty much light tight. That was uh, 10 seconds I removed that for as well. And then coming down to the last photo, we have this one here. Now after I had adjusted um, these issues, I headed back out the next day just to retake a couple of the photos and try a couple more. But I went back to that first treat and this certainly much more happy with no light leaks, no problems. Really like this. It's a very wide camera as well, so it's taken a little while to get my head around this again. Second one, I quickly popped back up to that tree. Couldn't resist that one. Uh, this was of a uh, lock bit up close. Uh, the camera is only about uh, five inches or so away from that, so it kind of um, shows how wide that is. And the last one, which is actually my favourite, was that tree taken from the other side and looking down the road. And I really like this one. Uh, so it's one I certainly want to explore more on a little bit in the future. But anyway, so I've really enjoyed this camera and it's been fantastic to be a part of this uh, process. Uh, like I've said, Andre is redesigning it. He's sorted all these problems out. Um, so I'm really excited to hopefully try the next one whenever he's finished. Uh, like I said, these cameras aren't yet available. I've had a couple of people message me already uh, asking about them. Uh, but as soon as they are, I'll let you know. Now he is also redesigning the uh, 6x6. We did notice a couple of little problems. Um, so make sure you head over to his Instagram page particularly. He's sharing a few photos there of the new designs and some of the photos coming from it. Uh, there's still a few little troubles and little tweaks to go, but please make sure you go over there, check out his work, check out uh, the other cameras he built, give him a little bit of encouragement, and uh, yeah, really support him in this, as I'm really excited for it, and really can't wait to try the little 6x6 at some point as well. So anyway, uh, thank you very much for watching. Uh, if you want to continue to be updated on this camera, please subscribe to my channel and please make sure you go check out Andre's uh, Instagram page uh, where you can see more of that as well and follow the progress as well. Anyway, thanks for watching everyone. I'll see you next time.